Hello everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy here with Jason. And uh, we are going to be talking about the flying sub cylinders. Now I know I said I wasn't really going to like support these or anything, but um, I wanted to pass along some information that's going to make it much more um, likely that you're going to have an easy time installing this in your boat. So we want to take a look at the cylinder, what's inside, how they're connected, and um, what you need to do to your transmitter to make sure that everything is going to work. All right, this is the sort of latest iteration of the cylinder that you're gonna end up seeing. Now this looks like a mess because we've got all of these jumpers on here because we wanna illustrate to you how this works. Now, um, we're just gonna show it on and then and how everything works and then we'll get into the layout of the cylinder. So Jason just turned the radio on. Now what he's gonna do um, is power on the unit. Now we've elected to move away from a mechanical switch and we went to a magnetic one. Okay, so all you do is take a magnet, swipe it, power came on with the uh, the light here. So you know, you know that we've got power, but you didn't hear any beeps, you didn't hear anything fire up. And the reason is this speed controller, which is really actually pretty awesome, needs to be in the zero position to start. And this transmitter is in the center, which is 50% throttle. These are one-way speed controllers, one-direction speed controllers. So all the way down. So it's off. Middle throttle is both 50%, both 100%. Now this is mixing, so if he goes to the right, one motor spins, the other shuts off. Other direction, one motor shuts off, the other one turns on. So that's how it's all done, just on one stick. It's super cool. Um, so, you, But you obviously need to do something to this radio, which we're going to get into, because this is a spring-loaded switch. Now, if you've got a ratchet on your radio, you're in good shape. If you've got a spring, we're going to do a mod in here. We'll show you what it looks like inside these radios, and um, we'll make that change. And it's just a swipe to turn off as well. So let's, I'm gonna take this all apart and we're gonna take a closer look at what the inside of this cylinder looks like. So this is uh, everything that's inside the cylinder. We have our receiver, lots of room there. Um, we've got the magnetic switch. This is what you swipe across with the magnet, okay? Um, if you wanted to get creative, you know, there's probably room you could mount it on the bottom of the battery and swipe under your model with a powerful enough magnet so you wouldn't even need to open it up to turn it on and off. Something to think about. Uh, and then there's the electronic uh, pitch controller on the side of the unit there right now. Now what some things that you're going to note that may be different. This particular cylinder has two outputs. What you're going to get is not unless you specifically reach out to me for two outputs and it's an upcharge for the additional servo. Uh, seal and linkage. If you do two, you could potentially um, have your two jets work independently so you could do barrel rolls, in theory. Um, the other thing is, rather than these XT30 connectors, you may have bullet connectors. It's the same thing. So uh, that's, the only, that's the only difference there. In terms of the connections to the receiver, um, channel one and two, uh, which is your right stick, is what we connected to these servos. That's your pitch control, what you're going to connect to those jets on the back of your boat. Three and four is your throttle and rudder input, and that is what gets mixed by this um, electronic speed controller. Channel uh, three is what I plugged in the three lead servo wire coming out of the speed controller, and four is the yellow wire that gets plugged into the uh, signal output of the receiver on channel four. So that's just an overview of the wiring for the um, cylinder, for the receiver. Um, everything else should basically come ready to go. What we're going to do now, bust into this radio and we're going to show you how to do that stick mod. So this for 
anybody who is interested is the inside guts of kind of a standard radio. This is the VEX uh, six channel radio. You can see the toggle switches on the back. And then we've got our little gimbals in here for your sticks. And the way this works, you've got these little plastic riders, these black plastic riders, and they've got little springs on them. And that's what returns the stick to center position. Now, what we want to do is on the, the vertical, we want to undo this spring right here. And that's going to free up the stick. It's just going to flop around like a, like a dead fish. So what uh, we've got going on here, you can see this is just flopping around, it's loose. We want it to always return to this position. So we're gonna put a little rubber band between this end of this little geared gimbal majigger, and we're gonna put a little arm right here and we're gonna put that rubber band around. So it's always gonna wanna snap back to this position right here. And all we need for that is just a little rubber band we just happen to have here and a little piece of uh, brass. And we're just going to make a notch here, stretch it around, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. And here is the end result. Uh, we've got a little rubber band powered return. And that's just going to hold it down in the, uh, the bottom position there at all times. Super simple. Um, I'm just going to put it back together again and we'll fire everything up and make sure it works. Okay, final check of the system. We got everything uh, connected back up again. We're just going to double check and make sure that everything works. So radio went on. We're going to swipe our magnet. We heard a little blah, blah, blah. Looks good. Now, one note, because uh, this confused the heck out of us the first time we used these. Um, if you go with zero trim, at least on this radio, the motors will be running like this. So you just need to adjust your trim down, uh, both left and right and, and back and forth until the motors stop. In this particular case for the VEX, if you're using a VEX, we had to go to uh, minus 25 on the trim. Um, then we also need, I think, maybe 10 left and right, something, something like, like that, that to, to stop it from moving. But once that's all dialed in, everything works perfectly fine. Works really good. There you go, everyone. Um, a little bit more information to help make your flying sub build uh, better. Um, as we go, these cylinders are becoming better and better. We're upgrading them all the time as we have new ideas and find new stuff to put in them. Um, there you go. Hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them below. But as I said in this product, this isn't something that really we are in a position to fully support. This is for anybody who has the ability and experience to pull this off. Uh, on your own. If you really do get confused and can't figure it out, there is a place to book consult time with me on my website and we can talk through things in person. With that, we'll let you go. Happy building and uh, we will catch you next time.